Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bernice Simon. Recently, I saw an ABBA and Preach video where they talked about Lana Rhodes and I wanted to talk about Lana, but you know, I was a little hesitant because it's such a tricky little issue with a lot of layers, but I figure I've given you guys enough of my language to have this conversation with you. What I mean by that is I'm gonna review Lana through the lens of the levels. The levels is an observational language slash philosophy I created with a co-author in which we are able to categorize human beings based off the information we have about them. Uh, especially after talking to them and we're able to sort of figure out where they are in relation to their understanding of their own existence. How good are they at introspection? Now, in my numbering system, there's a one through five. There are even subcategories for those numbers. As an example, for the twos, twos are most people in the world. There's A, Bs, and Cs. As would be people like Jeff Bezos, and Cs would be people like Lana Rhodes and her co-hosts co for their podcast. So there's this podcast. I do catch, in, catch it once in a while because I do follow adult actresses. You guys know I have an OnlyFans, but you also know I don't do traditional sex work. So so the reason I say that is this, though that work is appropriate for what I do, it also might be weird for people, like as an example, yesterday I put out a video showing people how to shave down there because the number one grooming question I get from women is how do I shave my pubes? And the fact that they don't know that or don't have people to teach them makes it so much more just gratifying to show people how to do simple things like that. But that's not traditional sex work, right? A lot of people might look at me and say, well, I didn't sign up for this. I signed up for something different. You know, a lot of men will write me very descriptive things, things they want from me. And I'm going to be honest with you. I can tell that they're men because women don't talk this way. Let me say it like this. Sometimes y'all call like the vagina the weirdest names and I don't get it. And it's definitely, I don't know, they're, it just makes me want to put on my clothes and never take them off. But that's the thing. Usually if you're a sex worker, it's not about what you want. You're not really running a business for yourself necessarily. That's usually erotic art or people who do like performative sex work. It depends on how you categorize yourself. Some sex workers, some girls on OnlyFans feel like they are here to cater to the customer no matter what the requests. Other people don't feel that way. So how you define yourself in sex work is going to be so specific to you and your brand. I'm indifferent to any word used. Obviously, as a person who sees myself as a five on my scale of enlightenment, I think I'm introspective enough and knowledgeable enough about the human existence to know that being nude and doing sex work isn't really the issue, that being nude and doing educational sex work is not the issue, that being nude isn't really the issue, but it is the issue, but it's not the issue. And I think we just need to grow up a little bit when having these conversations. I'm trying to be frank and transparent with how I view the world. And Lana is just such a good example of a 2C. We just have to use her as one. When it comes to that, so what I was talking about, like being pressured, um, to do like more and more things, more hardcore things. So there's two different main genres of porn. There's gonzo porn, which is the aggressive porn that you guys are talking about. It's mm -hmm. the rough anal sex. It's the choking. I don't want to go into too much detail. Like honestly, some of my experiences are really humiliating for me and I wish that they never happened. There's stuff going on, like people getting pissed on, men are pissing inside of women's vaginas, assholes, down their throats, they're... Sorry. Oh, don't cry. <laughs> Tell me something was like this. No, I'm crying. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> no, don't cry. I'm just okay. giving some examples. But... But if Lana sees this girl, reach out to me. Literally, my work is to help women like you who are in a position of questioning their worth in relation to their past. And trust me, as a woman who has definitely done, you know, a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of very outside her bubble things, I know what it's like to question my existence because of those things. So if you ever need anything, you know, email me. I want to make sure that when we're having this conversation, you understand that on this channel, sex work is a job that it's valid and that you should be able to do it if you want. So with that said, one of the issues with the sex work industry, no matter where you're at, is exploitation. We know this for a fact, but what surprises me is how many people volunteer for that exploitation. Some people like conservatives would say, oh, any sex work is exploitation. And I do agree to some extent, but I don't think that stops it from being a viable job. And I think that's the key because I believe in free will and because I believe that freedom of the individual is so much more important than anything else. I do believe in people's agency. I'm not here to tell you what to do with your bodies. I'm not here to tell you what to do with your life. I don't want that control over you. The individual has has rights and I want you to explore those rights, right? Without the risk of being beaten up or raped or fired. And so that's a little bit of the issue though. Everything our ancestors built for us was to aim towards more freedom. So we need to be very self-aware about how we 
want to regulate the people around us. I've heard so many times from people who say that sex work should be illegal or that girls shouldn't be able to do sex work until they're 25 or 21. And at the end of the day, if you're If the thing you're presenting to the world is to limit the agency over female bodies or male bodies, you're automatically wrong. And that's the issue is ultimately if the starting point of what you want to happen is for them to have less choice, we're messing up. Even if it's to protect people, we cannot give people less choice and shit on all of our ancestors that work so hard to give us some version of freedom, right? Now, we do this every day. We sell out constantly. Like Lana tells this story about how she had to do horrible things in the sex industry and she felt like coerced and felt like men pushed her to do it. She had to do this thing where she vomited into a bowl of piss and then he wanted her to eat it. Guys are literally punching into a girl's asshole like this. I'm like, she's going to have issues for the rest of her life due to this. And is it worth someone making a little bit of money and someone jerking off to it. One of the worst, honestly, I feel like I'm in denial sometimes and I can't accept some of the things that I've done. Uh, Just want to pause here to reassure Lana and anyone out there hearing this. This is incredibly normal, especially after doing something that is outside your concept of how you see yourself. There is one thing that, you know, I tried talking to a therapist about before something that I had to do for a scene that was really rough for me. Um, basically, this guy had a bowl and he like gagged me until I threw up into it. And then he like pissed in the bowl. And during the scene, he asked me to drink it. And I didn't know how to say no. It was one of the most disgusting, foul scenes I ever had to do. And I'm telling a therapist this and they don't even fucking know what to say to me. Yeah. yeah. No one can relate. Like, no one fucking knows what to say about it. I'm not saying that I was raped. Yeah. I, but you were put in the spot. You were I, put, yeah, I told this guy, like, yeah, I'm excited. Let's do this. I just, I didn't know how to say no. I, yeah. I didn't. I just wanted everyone to be happy. So it's, I can't blame anyone. All that I can do now is make the best of my experiences and accept it, which is really hard for me to do. I'm sorry. I just need to pause it here again. Lana, please email me i swear i swear i can i can be some stepping stone in your process because i have not only like places i can send you or people i can at least connect you with in general but like there are sex therapists and therapists who know sex work and there are people in in la there there's me and my philosophy i'm telling you girl i 100 percent can be a positive stepping stone towards your healing process because what you're saying to me is not only not shocking, but I absolutely have met people who have either done these things or worse. And trust me, they were in the same position you were in. And we are all in better places. And everyone I know who's had to do things like this, everyone is a work in progress. Do not be discouraged from healing. It's totally 100% in your path. I don't know about you, but it was very hard for me not to gag listening to that story. And I have done a lot of really deplorable things in my life. But that that's interesting to me, right? That Lana can be worth anywhere from 1 million to 20 million, depending on who you ask on Google. She can become this famous person with 60 million followers. She can do all of these things that land her on top and still feel so lost and alone and still feel like a victim. Why is Lana Rhodes playing the victim card because she is one she's want she is a victim of her own understanding of reality so here is the issue with the levels the levels my observational philosophy okay ones useless people people can't even figure it out and then there's two c's two c's are often mistaken for ones they're not the same two c's are the people in our population who are struggling who 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 really do come from backgrounds of you know divorced parents low income lack of education and they make decisions in you know as survivalists like lana is a really good survivor i want to give her major major props for being a really good survivor But she's not so great when it comes to business. No matter how much she's made, you can tell by the way she regrets it now that it wasn't her choice and the way that it would be my choice. So one of the differences between my personality and anyone else's I've ever met is that I am so aware of how much is not my own choice that I am very, very careful about what is my choice. Like I didn't lose my virginity till I was 22 because I knew how easy it was going to be to be put in a situation where this wasn't my choice. 
So I aggressively made it my choice. I was working at a grocery store and I told all the boys at the grocery store, I would like to have sex with a man who would like to have sex with me. I literally just put it out there. This glorious six just went to her place of work and put it out there. And you know what? All these people (laughs) volunteered. And then I chose one of them. And then as we were in bed together, I literally told him, I was like, hands down, let me do my thing. How you take control of your life is going to look different. For me, It was knowing ahead of time because I grew up very self-aware as a child that the the world was cruel. So my job was to be smarter than the cruel world, to be a very good survivor. And I would say Lana and I are survivors in different ways, though, because I grew up in a 2B environment versus a 2C environment. I was given more tools. So 2Cs are people who are really born with little to no tools, but are still trying their best to be good people. So they're doing the crimes. They're doing the petty crimes. They're doing crimes that are so stupid. You're like, my bro, if you're going to do that, do it smarter. But they can't do it smarter. You know how the 2As commit crimes like these billionaires, these Jeff Bezos, but they're committing crimes like smartly, right? 2Cs are the lower part. And now it's not about demographics necessarily, or a lot of the time I associate income with the levels, but really it's because introspection will bring you a certain level of living. So if you know little to nothing about basic tax, um, filling out a checkbook, signing your kids up for an account, making sure your kids go to better schools, if you don't even know the basics, you don't even have the tools to have more introspection, to sit there and think, what am I doing on this planet? All you're thinking is I have to feed my kids and I have to work with two jobs and I have to go to school. So you're not really thinking. You're not given a chance. Two Bs are usually middle to upper class people, people who have had time to think, what am I doing with my life? Even for a second, because they've had time. And same with two A's. Two A's have fundamentally realized that we're just biological creatures. We evolved over time and they're going to make the best out of the world without seeking enlightenment or peace, which is why they still struggle. It's why they, even with all their money, are never happy. And so here's Lana Rhodes with very limited information desiring to be someone new. So Lana, as you know, got plastic surgery, changed her look, really took over the industry, did just about anything to become on top of it. And she did. She didn't make the most in the actual industry itself, according to her. But and I believe that to a large extent. But she did what she needed to do to make money now. She's established sponsors and all these things, a podcast with her girls. Like she's doing stuff. And even her friends And um, you can tell by the way they talk, their canter. You can tell by the way they relate their reality to Lana's. Oops, that they are also two Cs, that they are also people with a struggling understanding understand understanding of themselves as an example when Lana's telling the story about the vomit and piss bowl her friend says uh says this I was just gonna you know um chime in and say about how you had to do something that you know you didn't want to do or you felt pressured I definitely can relate to that just even by like working at Hooters I know me and you have worked there I obviously have a little longer history of that and you know I definitely was a sex object like that's who I was viewed as working Mm -hmm. at Hooters clearly I was the complete opposite of that But, you know, I definitely was pressured into some things that I didn't want to do with men. Um, They had the audacity to ask me to literally go give them a handjob behind the dumpsters. (laughs) Yeah, you know. Um, I'm sorry, (laughs) it's not funny, but it's like like comical. It's comical. behind a dumpster. No, no, but they would would push my limits. Like, they would just kind of, like, joke around at first. Or, like, oh, um, I'll give you a hundred. And they are touchy sometimes, too, no? Yeah, and, you know, they were like, oh, I'll give you a hundred dollars if you take off your panties for me. And, you know, I was vulnerable. I was young. I was like, oh, like, no harm. Like, okay, like, he just wants my panties. Like, heck yeah, a hundred dollars. Like, that's going to keep my bill. They're going to be like, how much Yeah, they kept pushing. And and once they, like, put you on the spot, like, it's so hard to, like, say no when you feel so so awkward because you don't want to one ruin a relationship with a client who yeah. comes into Hooters every single day okay. who is basically paying your bills mm-hmm. who's tipping you you know too you don't want to piss them off to where they're gonna go say something so you know I I definitely can relay on the pressure thing and I can I can definitely understand how you felt like being put in a situation that you did not know you're going to be put in because it mm-hmm. is so hard to get out of that so you know like I definitely understand sex workers and the porn industry a lot more just because I've had personal experiences that I can relate to so her friend brings up hooters 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 it's about your titties ladies and this is when men especially red pill MGTOW men will watch women like this again the fresh and fit men will watch women bring women like two c's onto their channel and say oh see women are just stupid sluts women are dumb ass whores Women are so fucking stupid, they can't even hold accountability for what they've chosen. 
hey Lana maybe instead of just like um putting your face in the vomit piss bowl you just got up and walked the fuck away and the reason that we all do that the reason why all of our petty brains no matter if you're MGTOW or not say why didn't you just get up and walk away is because we grew up in realities where we could get up and walk away you know weirdly enough growing up with an ideology a community a religion allows you to be more introspective if you're in the west and you grew up Christian Muslim or Jewish you actually were taught philosophy you were taught a real introspective tool that most people aren't so two B's often are more successful in the world because they have lessons from their ancestors given to them. They're often the people you would call quote unquote practicing Catholics, let's say as an example, versus a 2C might be someone who was raised quote unquote Christian, but didn't go to any church, didn't have a pastor, didn't have a community. And so they know very little bit about the religion they follow. So I was raised with role models. I was raised with women who risked their lives for their morals. I was raised with Catholic saints like St. Agnes who would rather burn at the stake than get naked for a man. Joan of Arc who led an army of men. Esther, who saved her people by facing the king. No matter how you slice and dice it, I was given tools Lana wasn't given because I was given role models. And I need you to hear me when I say this. I agree. Lana is equal accountable for not getting up and walking away she and women like her make the sex industry look bad they make the sex industry constantly attacked by conservatives because what do conservatives say sex workers shouldn't be allowed to be sex workers because look lana now lana coming out and saying that she never even wanted to do this it's like ladies okay do you understand that you are the reason you are the demographic people look to and feel bad for listen i'm not here to preach perfection lana is a person and i actually do hope she reaches out Make an appointment to talk to me, girl. I, I'm telling you, I think my work can help you 1,000 million percent. Because at the end of the day, I'm only gay judging you. You're not allowed to be mad at Lana because Lana doesn't have the tools. You all want to be feminist leaders? This is why I left feminism. Because feminism did shit for women like Lana. What good was feminism if it only served the upper middle class? How about the women with no education who literally need a way to understand that the system is bullshit, but the system is also workable. But you all don't even believe it's workable and that's why you never get anything done because you're so focused on your subgroups you're so focused on separating women continually instead of just acknowledging that women exist women have certain struggles and women do and are different than men and women need specific ways to understand the world why is over 70 percent of people in my audience women why are most of you peers poc lgbt or other why are a lot of you from conservative backgrounds but went more liberal but found the bullshit in everywhere because girls we're all living these realities at the same time and we're talking to each other we're actually talking women are much more sociable we care about people women are much more apt to care for communities because we do and and actively participate in in knowing people men do this too i'm not saying men don't do this but statistically overall men do it less so again if we all play to our strengths i think society was, would move more efficiently i know so many girls who are getting into hollywood and i ask i ask them i'm like why why when you know like with weinstein and me too and everything it showed why are you getting into hollywood they're like well fuck it like i don't want to do it but i'll do it if it means like getting famous because it's worth it it's like the price you pay fine so there's one reality in which we all acknowledge there's a price to pay and some people are willing to pay it and so you might as well do it, right? Or no, I'm not going to do it and I'm going to get kicked out of Hollywood. And I know a lot of people would have said, that's so stupid. Why did you do that? You could have made so much money. Exactly. You can do that if you would like. It should be your choice to literally sell out to make money. I just watched Friends with my brother and Joey has that whole episode where he's going to be Dr. Ray whatever his name is on days of our lives and he's gonna be on days of our lives if he sleeps with one of the producers I guess or whatever she is and at first he's like I don't want to do this man I feel like I'm selling out and then it was an even bigger role and he fucked the shit out of her for it right but felt dirty afterwards I'm gonna be honest with you one of the reasons I always say I'm a nice little poor YouTuber is because I am very, very much anti-selling out based off my own values and that's the thing I do have values that say I can't succeed this way but I don't think they're objective I just think they're subjective to how I see the world so I can't ask somebody else especially someone from a, someone from a 2c world which is one of the hardest worlds to survive in right you're lacking the least tools I can't ask them to have the same standard of ethics because of the world they're in now this makes sense with my value system which is ever-changing and evolving but when I was younger I did lie for survival I I put no lying into my value system because I recognized I was in a better place in life. 
I knew myself better. I knew people better. And I didn't have to do that anymore. But that's the thing. I know better. So of course I have to do better. But I'm making the case that Lana and girls like Lana and most of the feminists in the world don't know better. I think they're poorly educated. And I think they don't know what they want. And I think they don't know what they want because the world is run by twos. And even if they wanted to question their bubble, they can't and lo- or without losing their community, which means that they also feel threatened to be in that world, which means feminist movements, because they're gatekeepy, are just as bad as Hollywood agencies that gatekeep as well. You just gatekeep in different ways. Guys, stop pretending like we're not all doing this to people. The only argument I'm trying to make here is that there is hope. And I think the hope is going to stem from people being introspective. Sit with yourself and think to yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing? Who is making me do it? And in this moment in time, if like I am sitting in my room right now, I am Brittany is right here. And I look around my room. I have a computer to my left, a camera to my front, a microphone in my hand, and I have choice. I have choice to make this video. I have choice to post this video. I have choice to go on OnlyFans and post those things. I have a choice. And so long as I have a choice, I will make better ones as I gain wisdom. And so that's where you need to start. Who are you, Lana Rhodes? And what are you doing with your life? We all say we want things. And I do think you're telling the truth. You want them. But are you really building a life to get them? One of the things I'm doing to prepare for motherhood and, and, and wifehood, if I ever even get to do those things, right, find a consenting partner, all that jazz, is I'm reading up on parenting. I'm thinking about my body and my health. I'm going to the gym every day. I'm already thinking about how I'm going to have to give up weed because I want to breastfeed. I'm already thinking about all these things ahead of time because, again, I'm trying to live the best single life I can, you know, running this great career and doing my thing and then preparing for that chance of meeting a partner who then we would combine our lives together. I think Lana, like most women, like myself, if we want to be partnered, if we're that woman category of partnered, then we are thinking about that forever in a day. We are thinking about getting old with our partners. And even if we were wild in our 20s and maybe had a lot of threesomes and a lot of open relationships, you know, we have goals, especially as we get older. And I don't think there's ever a limit for us. I think if you grow up in certain bubbles, like 2C bubbles or cultural bubbles, and you have an expectation of what it means to be a woman, you're limited by those bubbles. But you as an individual are not limited by the world, by all of existence. My philosophy system is trying to convey to you guys that there are literal bubbles everywhere. And you can leave all of them to literally make any decision you want moving forward. To realize you are a living human being with a consciousness and what I believe is a soul. Whatever this thing is, we're experiencing this existence. We have to stop limiting ourselves to how people see us, to how men judge us, to how other women judge us. We need to be more self-aware and powerful. Do you believe you're a powerful, independent woman who needs no man? Then get off your knees and say no to a deal that's bad for you. Survive in a different, better way. Be someone your future self will be proud of and thank for all the passion you put into your life. Again, we should be existing for our future selves and our present moments. What am I going to do to ensure that future Lana has a good life or future Brittany has a good life? What am I going to do to thank past Lana for getting me where I am? Lana, you're in a position of power financially. Who do you have around you, girl? Get better like advisors or something. You have literally everything you need to have the life you want. And you're listening to the wrong people if you think you're not going to get it, girl. All right. I'm going to go. Talk to you soon. Bye. Layers.